I'm excited to share uh, some milestones. Uh, also, we'll be sharing some challenges that we need our community support on. First, a milestone. We have here some of our learners in our adult education program who celebrated Constitution Day. We do offer classes that are full, and actually our teacher, uh, Ms. Jennifer Gagliarni, uh, is known across the state for her work in developing citizenship courses. And these students are a part of that course, and as you can see, they're super excited about celebrating Constitution Day. I would also like to share our average daily attendance thus far since the first day of school, which was August 13th. And you can see that our overall MUSD average daily attendance is at 96.97. We want to get it at 97% and keep it there. Actually, we can always grow it from there. This chart shows uh, the number of absences each day. The red is the total number of absences the orange is excused absences, and I need to make sure people understand that even though the absence might be excused, it still does not count towards our average daily attendance. So these might be things like uh, going for a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment. So those kinds of things that you can control, please do those after school. And then the bottom pink line are unexcused absences. And it is good to see the trajectory has been going down the last several days. This is our overall um, average daily attendance as of today, so it's by day. And you can also see that our enrollment as of today is 10,224. And today's average daily attendance was 98.13. I want to point out that we do maintain an online log of our public records requests. And these uh, come with a lot of different types of requests. Generally, it's the kind of thing where entities want to know the compensation of staff members, and they post that for everybody. And sometimes we have uh, more unique types of public records requests. Since the beginning of the school year, we've had 12. And I want to point out that one of those was a request for administrator stipends for the last three years. And I want to assure the board that we, an executive cabinet, are reviewing policies and procedures and uh, making sure that all of our managers are following those uh, when it comes to stipends that are not in a contract, either for classified employees or um, certificated employees, or in our case, administrators, that um, they make sure that they're following procedure. We also are going to write procedures and expectations for management stipends, which are very limited, and we'll put them in our Milpitas Management Association handbook so it's very clear for everybody when those limited times might be that an administrator would have a stipend. And we, for all stipends that are not in the contract, we want to make sure that we have expected outcomes for the work, so a work product. And some examples of limited stipends for administrators might be grant funded. For example, we have an equity grant, and that funds uh, stipends for our Culture of We Equity team, which is a team of about nine. And they do work uh, for leadership as well as for their school sites where they are focusing on our equity board policy and assuring that we are implementing that policy. And then we also have as another example of a stipend is our maintenance operation and transportation. We have three supervisors. They each receive a stipend for the year because they have times that they are on call 24-7. So again, it's very limited, the number of stipends that we do. And typically, if we do have anything, it's uh, either funded by a grant, or in some very few cases, it's like the on-call or uh, filling in for, um, for example, we had uh, two principals last year who taught a class because we didn't have a teacher. So it would be examples like that. 
I also want to get of an update on our progress and work in learning about leading and also implementing artificial intelligence strategies in our work as well as in the classroom and instruction and I want to point out that last week on Friday at the Silicon Valley Ed Foundation trustee Norwood who sits on at the state level on the AI advisory task force for California School Boards Association facilitated this uh, talk which had included on it our Milpitas Unified Teacher Leader, Victoria Salas Salcedo from Rancho Middle School. Victoria has been uh, piloting and implementing AI strategies for the last three years in our classroom, and that makes her an expert. And this is her second uh, panel that she's been on in the last couple months, and very uh, proud of her and excited for what she's doing with our learners, both those in the seats as well as those in front of them. And another big uh, milestone is that on Friday, we also had our ribbon cutting for the phase two opening of the Milpitas Unified School District Innovation Campus. This is most of the people who were there. Some of them escaped and didn't get their picture taken. And uh, just really excited. You see, uh, we have elected officials, we have Air alumni from when the campus used to be the Air High School. We have family members, we have students, teachers, chief of police, of course our board members, and many uh, people who helped to make this happen. And you see above them, on the side of the building, Milpitas Unified School District build a culture of we. And while that is our first strategic goal, it is also a mindset. And I want to point out that when we have great things that happen like this, the culture of we is very evident. It also comes into play when we have challenges. So we have challenges. Uh, very similar to the county of Santa Clara as well as the nation since the uh, very uh, devastating school shooting at the, it was in August, I believe, of uh, school where there was another shooter and um, four people who lost their lives. Since then, across the nation, including in Milpitas Unified, there have been students who have determined that they would like to uh, use the social media platform in order to create threats to school campuses. What Milpitas Police Department has shared with us is that it seems that the two motivating factors are one, they think that they're anonymous, that they will not be discovered. The number, well, that would be number two, but number one is because they're looking to try and shut school so that they can have a day off. And uh, I wanna make it clear, and all of our principals sent home messages last week, that if a student makes a social media threat towards a school, that we will, regardless of whatever is done on the police end of things, we will move that student towards uh, expulsion. And another thing that's come to light in the last few days is that there are, there is another, I don't know what to call it, if I, I'll call it a trend, seems to be a TikTok thing, where uh, students determine that they want to create uh, fights and, um, Sometimes they're called slap clubs or fight clubs. And they put these on the video for others to see. And that is not tolerated. Uh, we're not about violence. We are about making sure that all of our learners have safe and secure places to learn and to work. So as a community, as a culture, we, we need every single person to invest time in making sure that if they see something, they say something. And also making sure that our young people know that this is not the way to get attention. It's not the way to seek um, belonging or status or respect from your peers. There are many other ways to do that. And we celebrated some of our young leaders today, tonight, for the ways that they strive to um, give back, to fill their sense of belonging, and to lead. So as a community, 
we can assure and build forward so that we have safe and secure learning and working places. And that concludes my update for this evening.